apologize to the member for London West for interrupting, but the clock is at 10.15, which moves us along to member statements. And the first member with a statement this morning is the member from the Shkegawak, James Bay. Merci, merci, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today to speak on behalf of my constituents in my riding of Meshkewak, James Bay, who are frustrated and tired of waiting for, uh, for their in-person test drive, drive test. Speaker, I've written to the Minister of Transportation numerous times about drive test examination issues. Oddly, the issue is, is unresolved. My letters remain unanswered, and Northerners still have to wait several months, close to over a year, to book their in-person drive test. Northerners are calling out are calling our office frustrated, frustrated because they can't book their appointments online. Nothing's available. Can't, can't book because the system is down. They are tired of being told they have to wait. Although many additional temporary road test centers have been open, none are in the north. Speaker, explain to me how someone who lives in London is using the online booking system to book their in-person drive test in Capus casing. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense, right? Let's talk of a young woman in our writing. She took uh, uh, an appointment in drive test. It took a an year and a half, and nothing is available until 2024. She's moving for school, and she has to leave her car behind. Uh, even with insurance, uh, which she kept uh, to have uh, uh, the driver's license. I asked the Minister of Transportation. I demand that the Ministry of Transportation once again to once and for all answer to Northerners, set proper geographical restriction for online booking, and open more temporary drive test centers in my riding. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last week on October 13th and 14th, I had the pleasure of joining the Honourable Jill Dunlop, Minister of Colleges and Universities, as her parliamentary assistant to tour Ottawa's colleges and universities, Algonquin College, Carleton University, Collège La Cité, and the University of Ottawa. We were joined by our Ottawa caucus colleagues, Minister Froelichen and MPP Roberts. The tour began in Algonquin College, led by President Claude Brulé, to see the Allied Health Labs for Nursing in PSW and the, and the Algonquin College Centre for Construction Excellence, where we got to speak with a few students about their career aspirations. Next was a tour of Carleton University with the President, uh, Benoit Antoine Bacon, where we had the chance to meet several staff, faculty and students at the Centre for Advanced Building Envelope Research and Postdoctoral uh, Fellowship, who, who showed us some of their amazing innovation and research in engineering and design. At Collège La Cité, the minister announced that the Ontario government is investing more than $400,000 towards innovative training and hands-on learning opportunities for French, French language nursing students in Ottawa so that they can continue to receive world-class education during the COVID-19 pandemic. And finally, to end the tour, uh, we were at Ottawa University, which is my alma mater, where we announced uh, that we're supporting an accelerated, flexible French language teacher education program through a partnership with the University City of Ottawa that will address the critical shortage of French language technological education teachers. Our government looks forward to continuing to collaborate with and support, and support important initiatives at Ontario's colleges and universities to ensure that we can continue to provide the best post-secondary education in Canada and internationally. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. People care about their health, and they clearly understand the importance of optometric eye care and are not willing to allow this government to play games with people's sight and eye health. My office is hearing from folks on ODSP, like Arnaldo, who says, quote, I'm diabetic. I need my eyes checked every year. I got to get it every year. I'm due for my glasses. I missed a year because of the pandemic, so what are we going to do about that? Seniors and diabetics and young people need glasses. The $39 million is a slap in the face. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, end quote. We're hearing from parents like Leanna, who wrote, quote, I'm writing to you today as a parent of two daughters in Oshawa, one who currently wears glasses and contact lenses, and one who this week has mentioned to me that she's having a difficult time reading the whiteboard at school. I have done what any parent would do in this case. I phoned my optometrist to make an appointment. My eldest needs new contact lenses, and my youngest likely now needs corrective lenses. To my horror, I learned that 
Not only is OHIP not covering our exams, but I can't even choose to pay to have my daughter's vision checked. I'm left with one daughter who now cannot get contact lenses because her prescription is more than a year old, and another who can't effectively learn because she is unable to see properly and no options to resolve this for my kids." End quote. Speaker, I've written to this Minister of Health about the many calls and letters from Oshawa seniors, folks, and families who cannot access the eye care they deserve. I will continue to present petitions and advocate for this government to return to the negotiating table and restore OHIP insured eye care services to all youth and seniors. Despite the challenges for many to accessing eye care in, in Ontario, everyone can see plainly that the government's unwilling to fairly fund optometric eye care. So do the right thing, Premier, and save eye care in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to bring attention to another example of the spirit of volunteerism that helps us to make Ontario, in my riding in Stormont Dundas and South Glengarry, the caring and best place to call home. The Township of South Stormont annually selects an individual to receive the Volunteer of the Year Award, named after Fran Laflamme, a longtime volunteer. For the year 2020, the recipient is Marlon E. Maloney, who began his journey of community service at the age of 13. Marlon personally felt the community generosity when a logging accident left him injured at the age of 16. The community rallied around him, raising needed funds with a community bene benefit dance. He has never stopped paying forward his, their kindness. His beneficiaries include the snowmobile, snowmobile clubs, Easter Seals, the Old Car Club, and most notably the Cornwall Township Lions Club. Through the Lions, he has undertaken nearly every task and held all positions within the club, helping them organize and to raise money for many causes over 57 years, still going strong at the young age of 73. If there is an event, Marlon is there in the hall named after him. So thank you, Marlon, and congratulations on this much-deserved honour. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past weekend, we had 10 shootings and four deaths in the City of Toronto. That makes 343 shootings, 38 deaths, and 140 injuries in the city so far. But my riding of Spadina, Fort York, has been the site of too many of these shootings on our streets and in Airbnb rentals. And across the city and across this province, people are, are suffering from the scourge of gun violence. In 2018, I brought a motion to the Toronto Board of Health asking it to recognize gun violence, exposure to gun violence, as a social determinant of health. My thinking has changed since then. I now realize that these are political determinants of health. Louis March of the Zero Gun Violence Movement says, if we don't deal with the roots of gun violence, they get deeper. And we, we deepen, this government has been deepening the roots of gun violence in this province with all of its actions, its freezing of the minimum wage, everything that, that leads to the growing gap between rich and poor, an Ontario works rate of $733 a month, uh, ODSP at $1,069 a month. We have low-income, segregated, largely racialized communities where people are desperate and where it's easier for a young person to get a gun than it is to get a job. We can stop gun violence. It is in our hands to do it, but it needs to stop. The police alone cannot do it. And the police have even said, the Toronto police have said, we cannot arrest our way out of this problem. We need political action to reduce the growing gap between rich and poor, to raise the levels of, of, uh, of jobs and opportunities for low-income communities in this province, and then we can solve gun violence once and for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Simcoe Gray. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise this morning to thank the uh, Minister of Health for keeping her promises. Last session, Minister Elliott promised cystic fibrosis patients that the life-extending medication Trikafta would be approved for funding at the earliest opportunity after the drug cleared regulatory requirements. In September, we learned that the Minister's hard work on this file paid off. Ontario became the first Canadian jurisdiction to list the treatment on its drug benefit program. After years of fighting, people living with cystic fibrosis in our province now have timely access to the effective treatment options they need to plan for a future that many feared they may not live to see. This past summer, the Minister of Health also kept her promise to visit Collingwood to learn firsthand about the need to replace the aging General Marine Hospital. The facility has been serving the fast-growing Southern Georgian Bay community 
with an increasing senior population for more than 60 years with limited upgrades. Minister Elliott announced a $15 million investment to allow the General Marine to move to the next stage of planning to ensure the constituents in the north end of my riding have access to the kind of high-quality care that will be required to meet their future needs. On behalf of the hospital and the communities it has served so well, I want to thank the minister and the government for its commitment to putting an end to hallway health care in our region and across the province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Pleased to recognize the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I want to recognize former Aramosa uh, Councillor Wellington County Warden and publisher Bill Adset, who passed away on October 5th. Bill was a public servant in the best way possible, but he was also a volunteer, historian, farmer, husband, and loving father. Bill accomplished many things. To his constituents, he brought water and sewer services, improvements to Wellington Place, a new Wellington Road 7 bridge over the Alora Gorge, and renewal of the Wellington County Administration Centre in Guelph, a project he championed from concept to completion. Bill was also a businessman. He founded a successful newspaper, the Wellington Advertiser. His vision, a free newspaper for everyone in Wellington County. He brought it to fruition. The Advertiser continues to serve every community in the county proudly and independently. It goes to over 40,000 homes and businesses each week. Bill was an active member of the Drayton Legion, Fergus Laura Rotary Club, Guelph's Men, Guelph's Men Club, and Trinity United Church in Guelph. His accomplishments are impressive. His dedication and decency are even more so. I know I speak for all of us, and certainly you, Mr. Speaker, when I say that Wellington County, and indeed all of Ontario, is better off because of Bill. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, for years, parents have struggled to afford Ontario's astronomical childcare costs, the highest in Canada. Now more than ever, parents need childcare that's affordable and safe so they can return to work or make their household budgets work. I'm talking to parents in my riding who tell me childcare costs are almost as much as their mortgages and certainly in many cases more than they pay in rent. Premier Ford needs to get moving and get Ontarians a deal now rather than leaving federal money on the table. The Ontario NDP is committed to working with the federal government to bring in a universal system of high-quality public and not-for-profit childcare that costs families only $10 per day. While Premier Ford's Conservatives argue with the federal Liberals over signing a $10 a day childcare deal, Ontario families are paying the price. So far, seven provinces and one territory have inked a deal with Ottawa to provide $10 per day childcare. We know it can be done. So I repeat, the Ontario NDP is committed to making childcare affordable by working with the federal government to bring in universal, high-quality, public and non-for-profit $10 a day childcare. We think governments can and should get that done and get it done right now. Thank you, Speaker. Thanks, Randy. The next member statement, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you so much, Speaker. I rise today to pay tribute to a great Canadian. Barry Turner passed away last Wednesday after a courageous battle with cancer. Barry's career in service to his community was extensive. He served as the Member of Parliament for Ottawa Carleton, a devoted conservationist. He served as a director with Ducks Unlimited. He was chair of the Association of Former Parliamentarians, as well as chair of the board at CHEO in Ottawa. His experience was diverse. Prior to elected office, he worked as a game warden in Tanzania and wrote a wonderful book titled From the Plains of Africa to the Jungles of Parliament. And personally, Speaker, Barry was somebody who helped mentor me as I started my political journey. He came out and helped door knock with me throughout both my nomination and election, and it was a great boost to a young man like myself just getting his start in politics. 
On behalf of everyone here in this legislature, I would like to pass along my sincerest condolences to his partner Susan and his entire family and thank Barry for his years of service to the Ottawa community and to Canada. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. I'm very pleased to inform the House that Paige Graydon Lynch from the riding of Markham Stouffville is today's Paige Captain. And we have with us today at Queen's Park his brother, Jack Lynch, and his sister, Claire Lynch. Also, we're joined today at Queen's Park by the mother of Paige Fraser Litzfield from the riding of Guelph, Shona Litchfield. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here as well. Thank you. Member for Niagara Centre has a point of order. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence for the St. Catharines General Motors worker who tragically passed after a workplace incident on Friday. Niagara Centre is seeking the unanimous consent of the House for a moment's silence in memory of the General Motors worker who passed away last Friday, tragically. Agreed? Agreed. 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 Members will please rise. Thank you very much. Members may take their seats.